Hey, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is a really cool rhythm strip that was sent to me by a member of ECG Academy. Thanks, Michael, for sending this over. So let's take a look at this strip. Now, when you look at the whole entire strip, you can see that there are three beats on this side, and then the QRS morphology appears to distinctly change for the remaining seven beats. There's also a difference in the rate. If we bring a pair of calipers over to the left side, drag them to the grid, so the rate here may be about 68 beats per minute or thereabouts. But dragging the caliper over to this side, we can see that these QRSs are a little bit faster. Resize the caliper, take it to the grid, it's more like about 90 beats per minute. So there's clearly a change in rate and there's clearly a slight change in the morphology. The one on the right side seems a little bit deeper, a little bit wider perhaps. And when you start looking at the trees, these first three QRS complexes have a pretty clear P wave in front of them. And the other thing is that the PR interval is really quite long. This PR is measuring almost 400 milliseconds, two large boxes. Let's zoom in and make it a little bit easier on us. So at this point, I actually set the calipers for this PR interval, and we're gonna look at the next beat, and we're gonna look at that PR interval, and it looks to be the same, still around 360 milliseconds. And then when we look at the third beat, again, we have a nice P wave with a stable PR interval. So you can say that's a normal sinus rhythm at 68 beats per minute with the first degree AV block. But now something changes, doesn't it? This QRS seems to come a little bit early, and the other thing is that there's no P wave in front of it. And it looks a little bit different from a morphology standpoint. How did the rhythm change and what would you call this? Well, the attending cardiologist called this an accelerated junctional rhythm. And I imagine he based it on the fact that it's a little bit faster, that there's no P wave in front of it, and that the morphology changed ever so slightly. How many people would agree with that? Well, there was a little bit of a discussion about what this rhythm was. Accelerated junctional rhythm is a reasonable diagnosis to consider, but there's one very important subtle point that tells you absolutely this is not the case. Because remember, when the sinus node fires, the signal goes down into the patient's left, it gets into the AV node where it's delayed for a split second, and then emerges from the His bundle, going down the bundle branches, and resulting in a narrow QRS complex. But with an accelerated junctional rhythm, the AV node speeds up for some reason, and the AV node becomes faster than the sinus node, because normally the AV node should fire around something like 40 or 45 beats per minute. So when you have a rate of 90 here, it means the AV node suddenly went faster than the sinus node and overtook the sinus node. So now you have a signal that goes down the Hisperkinji system, but then generally makes its way back up the atria, resulting in a retrograde P wave, and it can occur in front of the QRS complex with a very short PR interval, or it can occur in the middle of the QRS where you don't see it, or commonly you'll see the retrograde P wave after the QRS complex in patients with an accelerated junctional rhythm. And sometimes these arrhythmias may arise from slightly downstream and so you can get delay in some of the bundle branches that can give rise to a slight aberrancy as the signal goes down the conduction system. So we're gonna say that this first beat of this weird rhythm came from the AV node, or maybe slightly downstream from the AV node, which is what explains the very slight aberrancy that's going on here. Okay, and it's possible that the AV node just started firing at that moment. But when you have an accelerated junctional rhythm, what's happening to the sinus node? The sinus node doesn't really know what the AV node is doing. And sometimes you can have an accelerated junctional rhythm as an escape rhythm, right? If the sinus node slows down suddenly, then the AV node sort of takes over and it may take over at a slightly faster rate than you would expect. If that's the case, what'll happen is your sinus node is going along and going along and going along and suddenly the sinus node was slow down and you have a little bit of a sinus pause and this accelerated junctional rhythm will appear as an escape rhythm, right? Isn't that what you'd expect? If that's the case, then the first beat of this accelerated junctional rhythm would wind up being late because there's no P wave here. And with no P wave, then the AV node kind of takes over. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, but what differs here is that this QRS complex doesn't come late as an escape rhythm. It comes a little early. But if it comes early, that raises a serious issue. Because if we take our calipers and put it on the P to P interval, okay, like so, we put it on the P to P interval. Now the sinus node doesn't know what the AV node is doing. 
So if we move this over, we would have expected the sinus node to fire at this point, and so we would have expected a P wave to appear here, and this first beat of this so-called junctional rhythm would have had a short PR because the P wave didn't conduct, the QRS arose from below that, so there should have been a sinus P wave with a short PR there if this was an accelerated junctional rhythm, but there's no P. That actually gives us the answer here because it'd be highly unlikely for there to be a sinus pause, but then the QRS complex comes sooner than you'd expect. So it's not an escape beat. It came from somewhere. And the answer is there must be a P wave here on this T that now conducted with a very long first degree AV block, giving rise to this QRS complex. And since it's a little bit earlier, it has a very slight aberrancy. Now if look at the height of this T wave compare with all the other T waves in this strip. And likewise, this T wave is very tall and it seems that there's a P wave there that gave rise to this QRS. And so, if we zoom out again, this very interesting arrhythmia is basically occurring because of a sudden increase in the sinus rate, or maybe there's an ectopic focus that started to fire at 90 beats per minute. And at 90 beats per minute, the PR interval got to be so long that you don't really see the P waves because they're buried in the previous T wave. And now you have one-to-one -one conduction with a very long PR interval, and that's what gives rise to these beats that have no visible P wave in front of them. Isn't that fascinating? I mean, there's really no other explanation that makes sense. So kudos to Michael, and I hope you guys all feel comfortable enough to argue with the attending cardiologist because they're not always right, trust me. But what I hope is that with the lessons you learn from ECG Academy, that you'll feel comfortable making the right diagnosis and sticking to your guns. So until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.